Evening, folks. Jeff from RV Diagnostics. All right, it's that time again. School time. Folks that live in RVs, I don't care if it's a pop-up, if it's a Prevo, Class A, $2 million coach. There's some rules you got to follow, and you're not following them. Just because you have 10 outlets in your RV don't mean that you can plug in five different heaters, five different toasters, three coffee pots, 16 hair dryers. You're getting my drift. I've done a few videos now on this. Folks, there's been a rash of questions about, hey, I'm plugging in this and that, and that blows, and you're the cause of it. The RV owner, you have to educate yourself. And this is what we're trying to do. Not mad at you, not happy. I'm just telling you, you're pushing the limit on a lot of this stuff. And you're going to endanger yourself and cause a fire most likely. All right. The quality of these RVs have definitely dropped after 2008. But let's get back to it. All right. If you got one outlet, you got to go to the circuit breakers or the GFI, right? And you go, okay, watch pop you pop the circuit breaker or the or the gfi right you go and find how many outlets are on that let's say there's five well guess what it's a 15 amp circuit you can do the math not 15 amps for each outlet folks that's just not it's not gonna do it all right you can only use 15 amps now how do you get watts well most of your stuff is rated in wattage all right so 15, right, amps times 120. Come on now, do the math. All right, I gave you a little time. It's 1,800 watts. All right. That's not a lot, folks. All right, if you're running one heater, pushing 900 to 1,200 watts, you've already pretty much used it all. All right? So... You need to learn. You got to go to your coach, your house, your RV, and you got to find out, hey, I got five outlets on this side, six, seven. Let me flip this one circuit breaker that says outlets or accessories, or you got to figure it out because some of them are coming, they ain't even labeled. So you find out, you flip that circuit breaker to one GFI, and you go, oh my God, there's like eight outlets on this. Two receptacles, each outlet, you go, that don't mean you get to plug in eight different things. It only means you get to draw, you know, no more than like 1,800 watts is pushing it. All right, I'd say around 1,600, okay? And the important part is the voltage can't drop below 108 volts AC. And I'm going to show you something. I've done this video already. Uh, but a lot of you ain't going to my YouTube channel and looking at school time or from the chair. Here we go. All right, I'm plugged into there. Right now, it's 115 volts AC. I have a heater right here. All right, uh, uh, whatever they are, hibiscus. They're growing and blooming and all, and I got some uh, herbs growing over there. But anyway, that's, that's on a different circuit. See the receptacle over there? That's a different circuit. Look, I don't even allow it when, I, when this was built. I plugged that one off because I know... My wife is going to get in here. Somebody going to get in here, and they're going to plug in more crap than it's supposed to be. All right, so I head it off. Now, 115 volts. Watch now. This is just one little heater. It's on one, not two. All right, watch. I'm going to put it on two. Watch the 115 volts. Ready? You see that drop? 112. There you go, the heating element's heating, 112. If that were to go below 108, I'd say I have a problem. All right, now watch. I'm going to turn it on one. Watch it jump up. Ready? To 116. No way it'll stabilize, 118. Look at that. Where am I getting to? Watch. I'm going to just turn it on fan, turn off the heating toaster elements. Holy good Lord, look at 121. Man. Now look, I got this little charger up here, a couple milliamps from a flashlight. I got my M1 tank LED lit up. That's it. 
Alright, that ain't gonna draw much, folks. I'm gonna tell you that. But, just for, you know, poops and giggles, I could disconnect it, but it ain't gonna affect it. Here we go. Watch, I'm gonna put it 121, I'm gonna put it to 2. Now, you got five of these outlets, and you got 22 heaters hooked up. Here we go, I'm gonna put it on 2. 19, 118, look at that. We were 121, 117... 116. Six volts difference. Oh. Must have got hot enough. And turned off. Because I only got it on low. So there you go. Well, there you go. Here, I'll just jack it up here. There. Uh, it's only like 62 in here. But there you go. Look. One third was on 121. Are you getting my drift now, folks? Look at that. All right, and I'm going to turn it off. Watch. Boom. It lost 7 to 8 volts AC. That number can't go below 108 at any time. All right. It's a Hughes D digital AC voltmeter. Plugs right into the outlet. You would take these. You would take this and just put it in that outlet that you found that are daisy chained. That means they're connected together, folks. You're burning your stuff up. Now, folks, if you got a 50 amp or a 30 amp service RV, you need to be plugged in to a 30 or 50 amp shoreline or pedestal. You know, y'all dog boning down to a 15 amp extension cord. 15 amps. What I tell you? As soon as you plug into your travel trailer, motor, home, pop up, whatever, it has this thing called a converter in it. It's drawing little amps too that you don't know. Vampire amps, I call it. Well, there you go. There's one, two, three amps there. Now you're trying to kick in a 1200 watt heater, coffee pot. You're burning your stuff up. All right, there you go. I'm trying my best to get through to y'all folks. I know you're cold out there, but you better find better ways to get warm. One, get 30, 50 amp service. Two, use propane. And I don't like them ones on the inside, propane buddy or whatever they're called, because they put a lot of moisture in the RV. That's the enemy of anything. Too much moisture means mold. And mold is not good for people that are old all right and not even young but i like just it was a rhyme please folks stop overloading your circuits a gfi that has high amp draw is not going to pop because of high amp draw it pops because it saw between the power and the ground more than 10 milliamp draw for a certain amount of time a couple milliseconds i believe i'm gonna hold my feet to the fire there you know i got a couple guys out here that are like you know even though I got electrical engineer and mechanical engineering degree, I was a field engineer. I didn't sit down and draw it out on paper all day long. I try to figure out what's going out in the field. And number one thing is, who is operating it? That's what I find out first. All right, now, please, folks, stop overloading your circuits. If it's cold, well, I guess you better learn how to insulate better. I best, bet you better learn how to put skirting up around it. I bet you better put 30 amp into it and 50, not 30 or 50 dog bone down to 15 amps. And the extension cord's 62 miles long. That ain't good either. All right. If anything, I would put a 20 amp cord in with a 15 amp adapter and then plug it in because of the length. But that's, I don't do it. I got a 50 amp service out there for my RV, but you know, I, I did all the work myself, but please folks, please don't stop overloading the circuit. Get one of these little things here. It lights up and puts it in each outlet and you say, wait a minute, man, let's drop them down. All right. You're drawing too many amps. Learn the wattage of the heater. If you've got to learn, if you have an RV, it remains repair vehicle. No, it means read volumes of information 
All right, wintertime and summertime are two different things. If you notice, your air conditioner is on two separate breakers if you have two of them. 20 amp, yellow sheath, Romex. All right, most of your outlets are on a white Romex, 15 amps. You know, I hate to tell you folks, by you not learning, you're damaging stuff, costing yourself valuable time and money, and probably freezing your butt off. All right. Put your heaters on one, deal with the cold, wear two pair of socks, wear wool if you're not allergic to it, uh, or get a hydronic heater. That's what we got in our big diesel pusher. I don't like propane furnaces. That's a personal thing, but eh, they're noisy. That's all. I they just I'm, Anyway, that's me. Everybody different, different income levels. This is Jeff from RV Diagnostic. What is the motto? Don't overload your circuits. Learn how many outlets are on each circuit. All right, get yourself one of these little things. It's a digital multimeter AC. Now, what's the motto? You're learning it. You're right. It's test, not guess, folks. What's the other saying, saying I have? Safe travels, mate. You can't fire as burn bright. Till we meet again, whether it be on the YouTube channel RV Diagnostics right here, whether it be on the Facebook page RV Diagnostics to troubleshooting 24,000 members, whether it be on the road at a filling station, whether it be at a campground, whether it be at a park saying hi, or whether it be at this garage at 22480 Bloxham School Road, Seaford, Delaware. 19973. That's where you come stop by. Got 50 amp service. Water and sewage in the back for you. You can stop by and learn. I don't know. It depends how deep your pockets are, how much it costs, how much you want to learn. But I'm going to tell you what, when you leave, you will have personal videos of me going over stuff in your coach, teaching you how to do it, teaching you how to troubleshoot it. All right? Depends how long you want to stay. I got to charge you $20, $30 a day for back here because I got to get the septic tank pumped out doesn't have a drain feel. It's just a big old 600-gallon septic tank back there. All right, my one for the house has a drain feel. All right. Anyway, folks, you also can email me at jeff at rvdiagnostics.com. The website, www.rvdiagnostics.com. Please go look at the website. You ain't got to join right away. It's $118 a year where I do one-on-one -on -one with you. I just helped two people today. Boom, bang, they're up and running. Right there was, between the two of them, was $500 worth of stuff that we went over. Boom! All they paid was $118 for a year. And I get a call from them a couple times. They're saving money, but they're learning their RV. You don't have to learn all the RVs I know. Learn your RV. All right, read volumes of information, RV. All right, thank you, folks. This is Jeff from RV Diagnostics. Enough yelling at you. Please learn about how many watch each device uses, hair dryer, toaster, microwave, refrigerator. You've got to learn, folks. Please, you're going to injure yourself, burn down your RV, that's what I'm worried about. I ain't worried about you popping circuit breakers. I'm worried about you hurting yourself. Thank you.